Item type import export tool can be used to export libraries to Excel sheet. Make changes in Excel and import it back to DGN Libs. It's also a good practice to have backups of your library definitions in an Excel sheet. You can also import export item type instances. In this example, we have exported the title block items attached to sheet models. We then update the changes in Excel and import it back. Imagine having to manually edit the title block information in hundreds of sheets, which uh, makes this a powerful productivity tool. Picklist Manager is a tool wherein you can create and manage picklists. Picklist helps you capture accurate data inputs. In this example, we have a door of different materials like glass, wood and steel. These unique materials values can be added as picklist. You can now store and access picklist directly from an Excel sheet. This new capability makes it much easier to manage and work with large amount of item type data. Expressions will be covered in more detail in another session, but we'll briefly cover this now. So what is an expression? It is a string that confirms to a certain syntax. Expression consists of numbers, string, symbols and operators. The result is evaluated by the expression evaluator and is displayed in the properties dialog. Help us some good examples of expressions. The newly introduced expression builder makes it easier to create or build an expression. Like any code editor, Expression Builder has the Syntax IntelliSense option and uh, it lists available functions for, for, an, for an object. Expression Builder also displays some basic help and has search options. Let's look at some functions. Most often you would use the this.get element and it means the active element. You have access to micro session related objects like active file, active model, session, workset, MSTN variable, etc. You also have access to .NET system library functions like system.string, system.math and others. And there's also an enquiry lookup function available. Here are some support queries. Use the search function in the expression builder to get the required property names. In this example, we want an expression to get the area of a closed element. Use the search feature and search for keywords like area. And you will notice there are three different area functions. Always look at the class value to confirm and use the right function. In this case, enclosed area is the right function to be used. Some additional support queries. We will look at some expression example to get elevation and slope. To get the elevation of a slab element, use the Z value of the low range point from the current element. And to calculate the slope, slope of an element, we first store the start and end points as separate properties. And we then apply this formula to calculate the slope. We will see this in the demo. These are some complex functions. Use the get item function to get the property of the same library or different libraries. Use the get related instance function to get property from sub elements. You will need to know the element relationship and understand relationship classes. There is a good blog explaining how to use get related instance function. Let's see the discussed functions in a demo. Let's check the import export tool. Navigate to the attach menu and under item types, click on the import export tool. In most cases, you would create the item types in a region lib file. You have options here to export your library definitions to an Excel file.
You can then make changes in the Excel file and import it back to your DGNlib files. In this file, we have some sheet models with title block information. Let's try and export the item instances to Excel. I will select all the models to export. Select the folder where you want the Excel file created. and uh, click on the export button. Let's open the Excel file and uh, make some changes. You will see we have three sheets with title block information. I'll, I'll make some changes here. and save the Excel sheet. We'll try and import back the changes. And you see the property values are automatically updated. Imagine having to manually edit the title block information in hundreds of sheets, which uh, makes this a very powerful productivity tool. The newly introduced Expression Builder is a useful tool to create or build an expression. Let's test the Expression Builder. Click on this icon to show function group. You can select or search for a function. We will create an expression to get the directory name of the active file. I will use a .NET function, system.path. And uh, let's use get directory name. There is a help section on how to use this function with some examples. You also have the syntax IntelliSense option like a code editor. Once you have built the expression, you can test if it's valid. Now let's save and uh, see the result. And you can see the folder name is correctly extracted. Now let's change the expression to get the file name. And let's test the result. You can see the file name along with the folder has been extracted. Now let's try only to display the file name excluding the folder name. We will use the system.path and there's a function get file name. And we will pass the active file dot file name parameter. And you can see in the properties, the file name has been extracted. Now let's test some existing expressions. We have an element with property and uh, depending on the element width, we set some codes using an expression. We use the if operator in this expression. And we also use the getItem function to access the element width property of the same library. And if the width is less than 10, we set a code to character A. We have additional conditions in this expression to set different codes. We have also built in some display styles 
rules to change the color of the element based on these code values. Now let's test what we have built. Depending on the width value, you can see the display styles being applied dynamically as we attach the item types to an element. And we can see that we can achieve a lot of things with expressions without having to do any programming. In our last example, we will see some expressions to extract the volume and elevation of a slab element. To get the elevation of a slab, we use the Z value of the element low range point. We see the volume and the elevation value has been extracted as required. In the next example, to calculate the slope of a line, we first store the start and end points as separate properties. We then use this formula to calculate the slope. Then we see the start and the end and the slope value has been extracted. And as I change the line points, the slope value changes. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.